This is the newly redesigned 2019 Ram 1500, Motor Trend's truck of the year. Not only is the Motor Trend's truck of the year, but it's also recently passed the Chevrolet Silverado to be the number two selling vehicle in the United States. With the redesign, there's a lot of new features on it, some carryover, some good information from the previous model that you might be familiar with, but today we're going to focus on some of the new additions, some of the new features, some of the new ADAS stuff that might not have been on the previous generation. And although it was redesigned for 2019, the old vehicle still has some carryover there. The DS version of this vehicle is still available, but will be going away shortly. Like always, we always start with the, the collision repair information that's necessary to access the proper repairs of this vehicle. Fiat Chrysler's got a couple of different websites. Uh, one, the techauthority.com website, as well as the moparrepairconnection.com. That's where we're going to find all the collision repair information for this vehicle, as well as some other general publication that Fiat Chrysler's made available to the industry including material identification. Now material identification is always important to develop our repair plan and know exactly what we're working on, what types of materials that we're dealing with, and what is and isn't repairable on it. Uh, the steel frame on this vehicle is 98% high strength steel, so a significant portion of high strength steel used for the frame on this vehicle. And there's some aluminum available, available on this truck as well. Uh, so we're using 6000 series on the hood and the tailgate on, these, on the vehicle. So no welding, no riveting necessarily, but we do have some aluminum consideration that we need to be thinking about when we're doing uh, cosmetic repairs. Now when it comes to welding, um, Fiat Chrysler has made some fantastic information available on the Ram 1500 as well as other vehicles. And I want to point out a couple of things that are, that are pretty significant because uh, we get a lot of questions from time to time. The first one is that weld through primers are not recommended. So uh, Ram does not allow, does not recommend weld through primers on their vehicles. So that's important to, to, to make a note of. Uh, it's going to be more critical because we're not using a weld through primer that we are following uh, collision repairs up with corrosion protection, cavity wax, et cetera. The other thing that I found interesting, I'm going to read this verbatim here because I think it's, it's quite important. Um, a significant amount of structural adhesive is used at the OEM, and that's across the board, not just uh, on RAM, but a lot of vehicle manufacturers are starting to use a lot more adhesive on their vehicles. Uh, use at the OEM to improve joint strength. It may be difficult to determine if the material between the panels is an adhesive or a sealer, and for this reason, the following guidelines should be used. If in doubt, use a two-component corrosion-inhibiting structural adhesive. GMA MIG welding is not recommended within one inch of the adhesive as it creates heat that will destroy the adhesive. However, squeeze-type resistant spot welding can weld through the adhesive and will not destroy the property. So uh, a pretty uh, important statement for us to keep in mind there. So again, if in doubt, use a two-component corrosion-inhibiting structural adhesive uh, when trying to duplicate those repairs on those repair joints. Rams also made some information available on what their welding techniques uh, they're looking for. So uh, this is a chart that's available in their, in their service information. Uh, talks about uh, con conventional GMAW, uh, MIG brazing, and even some information on flux core welding and wire as well. But uh, what you're going to see is that they're recommending ER70S6 uh, for the bulk of conventional GMA MIG welding on here. And depending on the material thickness, um, two to four millimeter thickness, we're going to be using 035 electrode wire. And as we start getting down into uh, some of the thinner materials, either 023 or 035, um, if it's uh, kind of intermediary, intermediary, so between one millimeter and three millimeters, they're recommending 035 electrode wire, and between 0.6 millimeters and 1.02 millimeters, they're recommending uh, 023 or 025 electrode uh, ER70S6. So very critical to make sure that we're following those welding parameters when working on it. They've also got information on, on shielding gas flow, uh, stick out, and of course the shielding gas, which uh, is conventional 7525. Uh, argon and CO2 mixture. Now, very similar to uh, the, the former frame, they do have a sectioning procedure available for the front of the front part of the frame. I guess it's not really a sectioning procedure because it is a it is a is a partial replacement at a factory seam, uh, but you do need to go through and make some uh, preliminary cuts before removing it. Uh, very similar to previous generations, uh, we're going to cut that rail off a little bit shorter uh, in front of the joint. And then we have to go in and remove that, uh, that rather large weld that's in that oval, oval area on the, on the frame to remove our new part, install a new part, do our measurement, make our fit up, and make sure that we're welding that properly with the recommended electrical wire based on the material thickness. 
And one thing that's really critical uh, as we move on today's vehicles is it's always been important to make sure that we've got a good three-dimensional measurement, that we've got the vehicle structure where it belongs. But with all of today's advanced driver assistance systems, it's even more important to make sure that that vehicle is pointing in the right direction and that the frame and the body of the vehicle is proper, the wheel alignment is correct as well, to make sure that when we're calibrating and aiming our ADAS systems that the, the vehicle functions properly. Now another familiar procedure you're going to see is on the upper rail, the, uh, the old shotgun rail, the hydroform fender rail as they're now calling it. Um, there is a sectioning procedure available, um, mid upper, upper rail area, and this is going to use uh, 50 millimeter inserts as well as 13 millimeter plug weld. So rather large plug weld holes, so that's almost a half, that's a half inch essentially. So 13 millimeter plug weld holes and uh, we want to make sure that we're doing practice welds. And we want to make sure that we're doing those practice welds on the same type of material. So when we cut off our old upper fender rail, let's use that to make our practice weld. So we don't want to just tune it on, you know, some 18 gauge coupons if we've got different thickness material in here. We want to make sure that we're going through and we're making the practice welds on the same material. So uh, another good tip for that is to start creating a log book for it. So if you're working on the upper shotgun rail, or on the upper fender rail, and you've tuned the welder on that rail, make some notes for yourself to know exactly what your, what, your, what your welding settings are at. Make some notes for the next vehicle that comes in. Now certainly you have to weld and make practice welds on the next one as well, but at least it'll give you a good starting point for it. Now as you can imagine, there are a whole suite of advanced driver assistance systems available on the new Ram. Um, they've got a, a, a new tow package with blind spots, so even if you've got a boat or a trailer on the truck, um, the blind spot systems still work. They've got lane departure warning, lane keep assist, um, uh, automatic emergency braking, cross traffic with rear backup, blind spots certainly. So a lot of ADAS features on the, on the truck that we need to be thinking about. But one thing that Ram has done um, that I think is, is fantastic, and I think we're going to see other vehicle manufacturers adopt this as well. So oftentimes we're going to see adaptive cruise control and automatic emergency braking and collision mitigation modules in the grill or behind the bumper on a lot of vehicles. RAM has put everything up into the driver assistance module that's located in the, in the windshield. Uh, so this, this particular feature controls the adaptive cruise control with the stop and go, their ACC Plus system. Um, it also works with their automatic high beams, so as another vehicle is coming towards you at night, if you've got your high beams on, it'll automatically put your low beams on for you. Um, lane departure warning with haptic feedback, uh, so you can feel that you're departing the lane, certainly that automatic emergency braking. And their full speed collision warning with automatic emergency braking, or uh, a, a long acronym here, the FCRFCW+. Uh, but nonetheless, so a lot of great features. It keeps that out of harm's way, so if it involved in a minor collision, um, where if I've got a, a camera or, a or not a camera, but a sensor located in the grill or behind the bumper cover, that's going to be prone to damage. Now if I'm in that same minor collision in my Ram 1500, because everything's located in the glass, there's going to be less, uh, there's going to be less severity on that potentially, but I'm still going to need to calibrate that uh, when removed. So with that, they do have a particular um, uh, DASM uh, aiming procedure that's available. Uh, so what they do is uh, anytime, that that D, anytime that that DASM is replaced, it needs to be aimed um, or when the windshield has been replaced and the DASM was r and uh, So if you take the glass off and need to remove, remove the, the DASM for that, that's going to require calibration. And if you change the diameter on the tires, you know, a lot of people like to put on different tires, different wheels on their vehicles, maybe lift the vehicle up a little bit. So if you've got a, if you've got a tire change, um, the calibration is also required uh, on it. Now there is a specification, uh, they're looking for minus one to point, minus one plus or minus point two tenths of a degree from vertical. Uh, so very, very small margin, but the preferred is plus or minus one tenth of a degree. So one tenth of one degree. And again, we, we want to make sure that we're thinking about that because that one tenth of one degree may not be that drastic at the windshield itself, but for looking at a vehicle that's maybe, you know, 50 yards or 100 yards in front of us that we need to be monitoring, uh, now if that, if that isn't uh, programmed properly, if it isn't aligned properly, it may not see the vehicle, may not, design, may, may not work as designed. So very important to do that. Uh, so once you've got, you're also going to need a scan tool for this. So once you get in the specification, you will have to hook up a scan tool to make sure that that procedure is done properly. And then one thing that I love that, that Ram has put together is um, a DASM verification test. Um, Collision Hub and others have done shows on 
not only the calibration and aiming requirements that re take you require you to drive the vehicle to go through those calibration requirements, but also post repair verification, taking the vehicle out on the road and making sure that all these systems work. Right in the Ram 1500 uh, service information, it says test drive the vehicle to verify proper operation. Uh, so we want to take that vehicle out, make sure that the lane keep assist is working, make sure the lane departure warning system is working, um, the adaptive cruise control, all those advanced safety systems that this vehicle is equipped with, we want to make sure that we're testing that before we give the keys back to their customer. And as a best practice, we want to make sure that when we give the customer their keys back that all those systems are enabled. If they want to turn them off, that's their prerogative, but when we hand the keys back to the customer to protect ourselves, we want to make sure that we're, we're programming all the systems and making sure that uh, they're functioning properly. And we're going to want to document that, make sure that we're documenting it, put that in the repair file, so we can say, hey, here we did the procedures, here's the procedures, what we did, here's the verification test, and even if you record that on a video with a GoPro or whatever, making sure that you're going through and checking all those systems. So something interesting about the front doors that we found on this, as well as in the uh, B-pillar area, is they have um, what they're calling is a composite reinforcement uh, in, that, in, the, in the door. And they've got a very strict warning there. Composite reinforcements must be installed to maintain, to maintain component strength standards. Warning, failure to follow these directions may result in serious or fatal injury. Uh, so they're making it very clear that uh, if that composite reinforcement is damaged, that the door has to be replaced. Uh, so again, very important to make sure they're doing it for the safety of, the, of our occupants. I said that's a rather bold statement. Failure to follow these directions may result in serious or fatal injury. So make sure if we've got damage that we're doing the right thing. Same thing with the B-pillar composite. So at the base of the B-pillar, they have the same, the same warnings, um, as well as they say that if the B-pillar composite reinforcement or any component that makes contact with the composite reinforcement is replaced, it will need to be resecured. Composite reinforcements absolutely must be reinstalled, and we're going to use a, a, a structural adhesive for that. And Fiat Chrysler uh, names two, Fuser 112B and 3M's uh, 8116. So we're making sure that we're following the proper adhesive recommendations on that. And there's also a front seat cross member composite reinforcement as well underneath the truck. Uh, same warnings on that, same requirements. So um, very important that we're following the service information for complete, uh, for those safe repairs. Okay, so for the side aperture, uh, one thing that RAM has made available is they've got a lot of different options for us. So based on that, based on the damage that the vehicle sustains, there are multiple sectioning operations available um, with a butt joint with a 13 millimeter or half inch backing plate. So um, we're going to go through and that way if we've got some damage maybe in the lower portion of the truck, we don't have to get in the roof, we don't have to remove the roof, we may not have to remove the glass for some procedures. Uh, so it's, it's, it's great that Fiat Chrysler's given us some options for that. Now when it comes to the inner body components, so the reinforcements behind those outer panels, um, there we will not be doing any section, so sectioning. So these are ultra high strength steel panels. We've got some 1300 MPA materials on uh, the A-pillar reinforcement and the inner door ring as well as the B-pillar reinforcement. So 1300 MPA steel, uh, up to 1300 MPA steel. So if there's any damage to those parts, we're not going to be straightening them and we're not going to be sectioning them. We're going to have to reinstall a new panel. Complete part replacement is the only option at that point. There is a, a procedure for a portion of the C-pillar inner reinforcement, however, um, using their modified lap joint. Uh, so at the, uh, at the base of the C-pillar, uh, they do allow for sectioning uh, of, the, of that, uh, that C-pillar inner uh, using what they're calling a modified lap joint. Uh, so to make that modified lap joint, it's essentially a combination of a lap joint and a couple of butt joints, as well as several 8-millimeter plug welds. Uh, so that information, how to make those joints, how to do those welding procedures are available from Fiat Chrysler in the, in the, in the RAM body repair manual. Uh, so make sure that you're doing that, uh, those procedures and following that new joint recommendation from, from RAM. Okay, so let's go back to some of the advanced driver assistance systems on the vehicle. Um, they've got a surround view camera as well, so to give you that 360 degree aerial view of it. Um, there are, are cameras located in the, in the grill. In the in the uh, in the tail lights, the tailgate area, I'm sorry, as well as the side view mirrors, um, and if those cameras are removed or replaced, um, there will be a, an aiming procedure that's required for that, and that re and, they, and RAM recommends doing that in a parking lot. Um, they want the vehicle driven at two to eight miles per hour in a straight line to help calibrate those cameras. Uh, so if a, a vehicle simply pulls out of a garage and knocks a mirror off. Um, and we re re replace that camera or replace the mirror, we're going to need to go through that calibration procedure. 
There's also a blind spot available. So in the tail lamp of the truck, uh, there is uh, blind spot monitoring sen sensors in there. Um, this one also has a calibration procedure. Uh, that, that for this calibration procedure, the vehicle must be driven at over 13 miles per hour on a straight path for longer than one minute. Uh, so we need to maybe uh, think about the timing on that so that we can get on the, on the road and make sure that it's out there. Um, it's going to be looking for certain criteria and once that criteria is met, both the uh, LEDs in the, in, the, in the mirrors will go off and a DTC will be stored. Uh, in the system and then that DTC can then be, uh, can, can then be cleared. So we're going to be looking for those LED lights to come on. That's going to let us know if the calibration is complete. Then we're going to need to go in and clear those DTCs that are there. Now when it does come to the rear portion of the frame, again we've got a 98% uh, ultra high, stre high strength steel frame on this vehicle. Um, when it comes to the rear, they don't offer any sectioning procedures for the rear or, or any partial part replacement. So if the vehicle is involved in a rear end collision, there is a chance that the frame may require replacement, so um, be, be particularly aware of that. That's an overview of the Ram 1500, some of the collision repair procedures that are required for it, some of the advanced driver assistance systems that are available on the vehicle. For more information on Fiat Chrysler vehicles and other vehicle specific training, uh, stay tuned to Collision Hub and Repair University. Thanks a lot, we'll see you next time.